Excited. This is awesome. You, you don't look so good. I'm feeling some anxiety. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to float? Uh, yeah, or I, I, can, I, I can maybe, you know, do I, I gotta pass. float, man. I gotta go All right. float. All right, brother. Okay. All right. I'm he's, going in. He's having some anxiety, so we're gonna let him just float oh. for about 15 minutes. Um, well, let's see. Yeah, shut that door. Oh. Gotta, yeah, see you later. We're, Thanks. We're gonna, we're gonna try some dry floats, see how it compares with the wet floating, and we think it should be pretty good. All right, well, I'm going to start. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the industry. Um, and when I started in uh, 2009, we actually opened in February 2010, uh, about 90% of the people were claustrophobic. And that sounds ridiculous, but that, that's what we got when we were at trade shows and everything. So um, very quick, we're going to go through a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you want to take notes during this, I would just take a snapshot with your cell phone. But I'm going to go through a lot of the good marketing stuff that we've learned. And uh, in 2009, there was only 15 or 20 centers in the United States, uh, which is mind-boggling. There was, of course, Samadhi tank, there was space-time tanks in Chicago, but very, very small. And you're looking at a $4 million annual, uh, at that time, movement, which we're still in. And it's just mind-boggling. And then in 2009, well, Andy, Andy, how many centers are in 2009? I'm floating right now. All right. I think there was one center. I think there's one center. We're going to try to coax Andy out as I go, but I know he gets anxious up here. So, uh, you know, and basically in 2011 then in the United States, we were looking at 80 active float centers, 80 active float centers. And I'd be very curious by a round of applause, who was opened in 2011? So a few people. So we went from 15 to 20 to 80 in just a few years, which is tremendous. So you're looking at about an annual revenue for the entire industry or movement of about $20 million. Uh, in 2011 in Canada, Andy, you're going to help me out here. Uh, one. No way. Still one. Still one center. So Varium, still one center in Canada in the entire country in 2011. Absolutely mind-boggling. So where are we now? So in the United States, there's 271 active float centers according to Time magazine which is, it's tremendous. Yeah, everyone give yourself a round of applause. And so you can see how the growth is absolutely exponential. And this is, of course, Flotation Locations was the source on this. And they're doing a tremendous job mapping out where to float. And, you know, it's really amazing. In 2015 in Canada, we're up to 56 active float centers from one, from one float center. So where that puts us is in a very, very tremendous place. Um, you know, if you look at the health and wellness industry, it's over $3 trillion a year industry, trillion. And basically, you, you have uh, yoga as a great example. Yoga is a $30, uh, $30 billion industry. And, it, you know, it, it just exploded in the last decade or so. So float therapy, if you break it down, uh, you're looking at what I anticipate is in the next few years, we're going to enter into a billion dollar industry. So if anybody feels that, just give the whole industry a round of applause because everyone in this audience, that's what we have to do. So there is, let me go back to the slide. So there's about 2 million people floating in the U.S., or excuse me, 2 million people have floated in the U.S. right now. And that's about a half of a percent of the population. And so when you, when you talk to people on the street, at least I know when I do, I would say 10% of the people I talk to have actually heard of floating. And, you know, it's really getting out there. And so I believe through word of mouth, more centers opening, the demand for floating right now is greater than the amount of centers that can, uh, you know, hold that demand. And so we're going very fast. So you have to prepare yourself for success. So I'm going to go so through some of the things uh, while Andy's taking a little float here that we, we do as a brand that's going to help the whole industry. And then Andy's going to get into what we can do as a movement to grow the whole thing to, from a $100 million industry to a billion dollar. And it takes a movement to do that. And so <clears throat> TrueRest does about $125,000 per pod. 
uh, I'm going to go very fast. And 55% um, of our gross income actually comes from recurring memberships. And that's very important. So as a center, if you're not doing memberships yet, definitely recommend it. And talk to our team over at TrueRest, as well as Float House. Um, so basically 20% of our clients, uh, 20 to 25% of new clients come in are converted into members, which is absolutely tremendous. Um, it's an amazing thing. And so I'm going to go through a little bit where our paid advertisement comes from. And again, I'm going very, very fast. And so we get 30% from Groupon and Living Social, about 30% from social media alone. So we have 20,000 people on our Facebook page. So I get 80 to 100 people a month from just social media, new, new clients, which is tremendous. Uh, <clears throat> I was talking to someone earlier, we actually get less than about 1% from Yelp, uh, though it does help for the review aspect of things. But for us, we're finding it's not bringing in a whole lot of new clients. 25% from referral. 25% from referrals. So one-fourth of our business is from referrals and word of mouth. 7% from the web, then 1% walk-in, and then, of course, 3% from the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> and in Canada, that's more like 50%. So people love Joe Rogan. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is just break down some of the actual uh, math for everyone and how we're doing this. Uh, so what we're doing, we're... Uh, editing our marketing strategy. So what we're trying to do is we're taking um, every, everything we do and putting it into boxes. So we're trying to reduce our marketing at TrueRest and ha not have any one thing represent more than 20% of our marketing efforts. And it's called, in marketing, uh, poles in the water. So you want to have multiple poles in the water. And um, I'm going to show you an actual live example. Um, so this here is some of the things we do. Oop, let me go back one. And so, and this is our referral system in a very brief sense. So if you aren't doing these things, you want to start doing these things. And this is things like follow-up emails. Um, you know, you can see on there personalized letters, some retention calls. And so this is how we create that 25% of our clients coming in from referrals. Um, and we're actually planning on increasing this through some other efforts. So you want to, you want to keep tracking, tracking, tracking when you do these things. Um, so the next one is ROI. And what you basically want to do is, and that stands for return on investment. And so your ROI is, um, this is a real life example. So uh, this is May of 2015. So we generated about 84 clients just from Facebook. And so we are spending about $8.33 to get a new client in the door. So if you have a center open right now, be tracking what, what kind of response you're getting with your marketing. Just have a little spreadsheet and you can track all these things. And so, you know, it's very, very useful to, to do this kind of uh, tracking. And <clears throat> in our university at True Rest, we talk about um, basically how much are you willing to pay for a customer. So when you think of marketing, you want to think of it as, um, you know, how much money do, does it cost to get that one person in the door? Obviously, referral is, is free. Um, and that represents the majority of our business. But some of the other things you're looking at uh, 20 to 25 percent of our float costs we're using towards marketing. So think of it as a percentage. So how much are you willing to spend as a percentage to get a per new person in your door? Um, <clears throat> some of the things we do are total annual value and lifetime value of a client. And so this basically breaks down uh, for you. You know, we're basically making uh, $300 for, from a member in the lifetime. So as a percentage, you want to look at your own store and your own metrics, because you don't use ours. But what are you charging for a float, and what's the percentage you'd be willing to charge for, uh, to get someone in the door? Andy, how are you doing? Doing good? He's out. I'm going to have to go get him in a second. How, how quickly can you reach maximum capacity? So this is a very important one. So when you open a store in your business plan, you want to map out, OK, how long is it going to take you to reach maximum capacity? And so again, um, <clears throat> there's a myth in the industry that if you open, you're going to just you know, have your doors uh, slammed open, you're going to be fully booked. And we have seen that in certain areas and certain centers, but you want to really, really, really do your due diligence when you're, when you're marketing. OK, so one of the big things is what can we do as an industry to grow? Uh, every successful store brand will drive the entire movement. Uh, avoid the pitfalls others have made, learn from others' success, and apply best practices across the board. So 
I'm actually going gonna, gonna to see if Andy's awake, because he's going to talk a little bit about what we should do as an industry as a whole. Oh, wow. How are you doing? It's bright out there. How's the dry oh. float? Does it work? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just coming out of my hypnagogic state right now. There you go. Oh. You know what? I'm feeling a little anxious myself. Oh, well, you know, you could always go for a float if you want to. And my mouth's all dry from talking, you know? Yeah, I'm try the zero you gotta get in there. float room. This is one of Kevin's. Wow, this is roomy. Okay, everybody. So today, I just wanted to talk about a few things uh, that I think I could give you guys a little bit of value on. And the first one I wanted to talk about is our situation and how we got to where we are. The second thing I want to touch on is a few keys to sales and marketing. And the third one is I actually want to do a call to action and provide an opportunity for everyone here today to get involved with something a lot bigger than ourselves. So let me get started. In terms of, a, in terms of an opening at Float House, it was pretty much a dream. We did $65,000 within the first week. Okay, it was phenomenal. This is our team. Here's us celebrating with some champagne and our amazing staff. We were very lucky to have them. And from that outsider perspective looking in, it's very easy to think that running a float center is easy, right? But just by a show of hands, how many of you actually think that running a float center is easy? Nobody. It's a very difficult thing to do. And that's why I have a lot of respect for everyone in this room. But from that outsider perspective, it's easy to understand why. Because what do people see? Well, they see a packed schedule, media coverage, they see a large social media following. This is us expanding from five to nine tanks. This is us opening our second location and our first franchise. And that's all within the first year. And you know, when Mike and I had all this going on, we thought we might see one or two fast followers come along. But this is what's kind of put us into this unique situation in Vancouver. And I took that photo with my drone, which unfortunately I crashed about two weeks ago. Very sad about that. But what we saw happen in Vancouver really surprised us, and it was this. And these are all... <laughs> these are all fully functional, beautifully well done float centers. Okay? And every time one of these new centers popped up, we watched them very carefully. And we were kind of surprised because they didn't really do a lot of marketing. And then sure enough, after they all got opened up, we saw lots of this. There's another name for these kind of deals. You know what that is? Business killers. This is something that we need to get away from as an industry. And I don't think a week goes by in Vancouver where we don't have one of these social, shield, uh, social shopper deals running. So I wanted to get into a little bit about what we can do and how we can get past using these as a crutch so often. And I want to go back to that first week that we had a float house and how that first week was actually a little bit of a mistake. That first week we, did, we sold 1,623 floats, so that is um, 541 grand opening specials at $120 each, and that works out to 65000 but the first week potential could have been this. It could have been 541 memberships sold, 541 times $40, which is a membership presale rate, and that equals $21,640 a month recurring. Now, the first side is definitely not a sustainable business model. We're selling packaged floats, mostly one-off experiences. The second side is, and we've shifted our entire sales strategy to selling nothing but memberships. In fact, when we open our next center, which will be Float House South Surrey with Jeff and Val, and they are doing an amazing job with their marketing, our new goal is to, open three, is to start off with 300 memberships before our grand opening. And I really do believe with the, the marketing work they're putting in now, that is possible. So how are we going to get there? Obviously, we have to do a lot of marketing and sales. So here's some keys to sales and marketing that I wanted to share with you today. And the first one is evaluate your sales process. First off, do you have a sales process? All right, everything from the first impression somebody gets of your center to when they actually buy something needs to be considered. And at Float House, you know, we like to communicate floating as a practice, of so something that's done regularly. And we reinforce this idea through our social media and our website. So hopefully, by the time they end up at Float House and they're actually with us, 
they have the idea that this is something they want to do on an ongoing basis. But if your team isn't on board with you, it's going to fall flat. So the next step on the sales process is you have to inspire your team. And one thing I'm going to say is every one of you in this room today is a leader. And you're leading a team of people that if you care about something, that they will care about it too. And if you make selling memberships a priority, so will they. And on top of that, we heavily incentivize our team to sell memberships. We set sales goals for them, and we reward them financially for when they hit those goals. Um, the next step is, of course, deliver on your promise. All right, we are selling restricted environmental stimulus therapy. Right? If you, if you, you know, need some help getting that going, there's lots of people in this room that can help you today, like Sean McCormick from Float Seattle, the Float On guys, okay, Nick from True Rest, come talk to us. But we have to deliver on what we say we're doing. If we don't, no one's really going to buy anything from us. And the last step on the, the uh, sales side of things is follow up. So every single person that comes through your doors is a potential membership opportunity. So ask them the right questions. Find out if we delivered on our promise. And of course, if we did, and everything's great, this opens the door to talk about joining as a member. Now, on the marketing side of things, I want to talk about strategy a little bit. And I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to market your centers effectively. And we've seen it firsthand in Vancouver. We have seen some of the best float centers in the world open up. There are some centers that have put over a million dollars into their build. But you know, at Float House, we've done it to a pretty high level, but nothing compared to what's being done in Vancouver. But for the most part, we are still the most busy. And the only reason that is is because we have basically 10x our competition in marketing. So what's one of the ways we've done this? One of the most effective marketing tactics we've used is to grow a community. And the most effective strategy to grow our community is our Float Ambassador program. And what this is, is essentially we go into the community, we find influencers, and they have to be in line with Float House values. And the deal is they float for free as long as they post about it on their social media or they talk about it within their circles. So the next key on the marketing side is we've grown our community, but what are they saying about us? And what are they saying about floating? I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with somebody and had a little chat and found out that people don't really know that much about what floating is all about. And this was the inspiration for our What Is Floating video. If you go to YouTube right now, you can find it. And it's a really good baseline video. And this video serves two purposes. One, to educate the general public. And two, to educate our staff. So we have actually a good base of knowledge uh, circulating in our community. And the last step of this process is get creative. You know, we found that traditional uh, mediums for marketing are kind of just falling flat. Um, we found that print, radio, billboards, people don't see them. They're kind of, people have blinders on these kind of things, they just ignore them. So this fall, we're going to start rolling out some guerrilla marketing tactics. And if you follow us on social media, you'll definitely see those things play out. And, oh, excuse me, on the theme of getting creative, the main reason I wanted to speak today, actually, is because I wanted to invite everybody in here to join us in a North American-wide marketing campaign. And the entire campaign will center around this. So hashtag why we float. If you don't know what a hashtag is, just ask your neighbor. I'm sure they can tell you what it is. And it will be launched primarily on social media. So we're going to launch it on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we will be running this, this contest. It will be an online social media contest from October 15th to November 23rd. And how it works is pretty simple. So you post a picture, or somebody will post a photo tell a compelling story as to why they float, and then they'll be eligible to win a prize. But what is this really about? What this is really about is content generation. One of the hardest things to do well with online marketing is coming up with a consistent uh, content generating machine. So the reason why this is so powerful is because when somebody posts, they're going to be advertising for you on a regional level, on a uh, a local level, they're going to be advertising to their friends and family on social media as to why they float. And secondly, this is going to put all these testimonials into a folder, essentially. That's what the hashtag is. So you can all go in there and pull out all the best ones, repost, reshare, and tweet them out. And it'll be a continuous stream of content generation. And of course, to incentivize this, uh, we have some prizes and pretty awesome ones. And Float House and TrueRest are actually going to split these prizes right down the middle. 
And the first, trip, uh, first prize will be a trip for two to Kauai for one week. And we're going to have two regional prizes, and that will be free floats for life and also free floats for a year. And free floats for life basically is the same as our membership, so one float per month as long as they're alive and as long as we're still in business. So if you'd like in on this, please uh, send me an email, andy at floathouse.ca, put in the subject hashtag why we float, and when the time is right, I'll email you the official rules, in-store posters, and social media graphics. And all of these will be completely generically branded. There won't be any Float House or True Rest logos on it anywhere. We are simply giving a marketing campaign. And from what I have seen, and what we've seen in Vancouver, I, I truly believe that floating is still very much a niche market. And we need to do something to hit a tipping point where we get all of, or more of the mainstream floating. And I truly think if we can come together and we can harness the power of our collective social medias, put it on your email list, put it on Facebook, boost it if it's on Facebook so people actually see it, okay? put it on Instagram, retweet it, I really think that we can get a lot, a lot of movement on this thing. So if you want in on this, you know, this is an opportunity for us to come together as a movement, and uh, I really hope that uh, we all jump in on this. So thank you. Do I have to get out now? Yeah, you're good. Oh, man.